heard the word KPI today, key performance indicator, and of course when it comes to those testings, we need measurements, and one of the famous German companies for measurements is Rode and Schwarz, and of course telecommunication moves very fast, so we need to have a senior business development manager who, yeah, is always right on track to measure the things the way they are, both in radio frequency and user experience, and now I welcome Christian Müller to tell me a little bit of his work and Thanks. tell us all a little bit of his Thanks work. Thanks a lot for the introduction. So at least we try our best to measure all these KPIs and what's needed so far. And uh, the last years, it was always a pleasure to be at the Connect conference. We talked about the beauty of 5G. Today, we would like to turn it around a little bit and to say essential learnings of this 5G installations for these critical applications or business critical applications. And I would like to go a little bit into an innovation beyond, which we see today might be an interesting part for some of these use cases. So, um, Rode and Schwarz, it's a 90 year old company. And uh, I joined it when we celebrated the 50th year anniversary. So, I have a few decades with Rode and Schwarz. And uh, I could follow the chain. So, when I saw the Connect magazine on 93, that was already where we did a lot of measurements on 2G and this drive test part. We are around 13,000 employees worldwide with global R&D uh, with, with centers. And uh, we are spending a lot of our uh, return into uh, R&D, into research, and into develop methodologies and all this kind of stuff. When we see Rode and Schwarz today, we have three columns, three business units. The big one, test and measurement. There we talk already about 6G, we talk about radar technology, sensors, we talk about all kind of measurement devices which are needed to develop new technologies, to produce certain um, components. And um, in this in test and measurement part, we are using a lot of experience out for this mobile network testing, which is a little bit my core focus on Rode and Schwarz. And you see here some, some example of instruments. So typical uh, lab environment with signal generators, spectrum analyzers, amplifiers. Um, as well, you have might seen some of the body scanners at the airport. That's microwave imaging, what we are doing there. And, and this is as well something which I got now connected into this 5G private network environment. How to make an asset protection. To, to protect your warehouses, your logistics centers, and so on. So it's a really wide portfolio. The second one, which is very useful for our experience, is this technology systems. We are providing secure communication infrastructure for uh, defense purposes, for networks, for governments, and so on, including some IP network analysis, where we do deep dive uh, deep packet inspection. Uh, we have a, a competence center here in, in Leipzig, which uh, is the core area in this IP network analytics, and broadcast amplifiers and broadcast solutions. Um, there we gain quite as well infrastructure knowledge. And a pretty new business area is this networks, cybersecurity, for security solutions, so uh, firewalls and point-to-point -point, um, uh, security, uh, where we have acquired Lancome recently. So these are the three columns. And <coughs> on my agenda today, the idea was what we got for this business critical applications, what kind of essential learnings we gained here, and afterwards, I would like to go for some innovations which we see in this 5G environment. As we heard before, when you're doing this kind of network analysis, there are two different sensor types. 
if you want to measure a performance, you need a device. You need a device which is connected to the network and where you can do all these kind of measurements where we had in the past voice quality, video quality. Today we see more and more this performance measurements in terms of latency, in terms of throughput, in, in this kind. And this is one of our drivers, what we have, to find methodologies, how you could measure a network to make it ready for this business critical applications, for this machine to machine communication and so on. So, and this is not only a smartphone today anymore, which we are using as such sensors. We have to go as well for these industry modules, which are installed in robots, in HEVs, or whatever. So that's one of the part where we say that's an active sensor used for monitoring, used for deployment, used for optimization, and so on. And for sure, um, when we had this latency and throughput stuff, still um, the availability of the network, and as well, if there is an issue in terms of signaling, you need a kind of trace possibility to see what the exchange between the device and the network will bring on. A typical scenario, so we can talk about hours about this part, but I just want to show you an example which was in the production environment where we were just walking around with such a device and you could see different radio conditions and you could see different performance in this environment. And if you are in such an industry environment in a production facility, every time you change your machineries and so on, you have different radio conditions. And this is something which makes it important to have a picture, is the radio condition still okay for the application which should run in it? So typical KPIs is the throughput, typical KPIs are latencies, typical KPIs are what is the power, the signal to noise ratio, so the quality of the network, what kind of connectivity we have, so what kind of modulation coding scheme. So that's everything we want to know. In a lot of the cases, we have a very perfect radio condition, but we don't get this throughput, which is expected. We don't get this modulation scheme, which we need. Yeah? And this brings me now to a point in this business critical applications where we have to find how do we make a measurement on the latency. We have so many applications, not anymore just e-gaming or just an, an HD video call. No, we have robots, we have tools in the production environment. So each of this application does have a certain requirement. And the key point is latency in a lot of these areas. <coughs> So what does happen if you don't have a good network condition in terms of a virtual reality part? The video freezes or is jerky. Even more critical if you have an industry application with a robot. If you don't have a proper latency, the robot stops. And I've just recently heard in a mining environment, if such a drilling machine stops, it takes about an hour until it really stops. And it takes about two hours to get it back in operation. So it's important that you have a feeling about your network. And this is something where I would like to introduce a, a, a kind of methodology, what we implemented and we are pretty proud because it's, <clears throat> it's now a really specification which has been accepted by the ITU. So we, we gave it as a uh, requirement into the Etsy, and now a couple of weeks ago it has been specified by the ITU. So what we are doing is we need certain profiles which we are sending out of a device. And this will be reflected by such a TRAMP server in your environment, in your cloud, in your factory, in your private network. And you have to manipulate the packet rate, the packet size, and the delay budget. And the, uh, the question was, can I create a score 
just one score where I get an evaluation or where I get a feeling how good is this network performance. And this score should be scalable. So I need, I have a certain requirement when I talk about e-gaming. So an 80 millisecond delay or latency is okay. If I talk about virtual reality retail shopping, even the latency can be a little bit longer than on this e-game. And the toughest one is the interactivity score on industry for zero requirements. So if a machine doesn't get a response within a certain time, it stops. And this was a big learning from our side, where we had in the past, we, we measured latency by ping in average. And that was OK. We've been in a, in a production environment, and we had a latency average of 18 milliseconds, but the robot stopped every time. So we saw we have to dive in, and we have to see the worst values. And there is quite a lot of still um, investigations necessary, and we are learning day by day. So this new approved standardized test procedure by ITU, this G.1051, this is now approved a couple of weeks ago, and there we, we had a lot of contribution in this kind of specification. And just an example, in, in one network, we were running different profiles with a low data throughput, with a medium one, one megabit per second, and with a high one, which we considered 15 megabits per second. And the, the latency varies from 18 milliseconds up to 42 milliseconds. So it shows you it's important to do this kind of optimization. If you don't get this kind of throughput, if you don't get this kind of latency, what to do? So if a mobile is not able to get connected to your network, the mobile is blind. You don't get any indication. And this brings me to the second sensor which we are offering. And this is a passive measurement receiver, which is used as well by this connect test for the coverage testing. And this is used for drive testing. This is used for walk testing. So depending the solution you, or the, the, the user group. What we learned is we need a passive device where you get an indication of the whole network environment without any subscription, no SIM card. I want to see in Germany in band 78, where I have my private network, the 100 megahertz, just beside the Deutsche Telekom. I need to know how strong is the Deutsche Telekom. I need to know what is the TDD pattern, because if I want to have more uplink, it can be that I get a, a, a interference, because the telecom is using maybe a different pattern. So this automatic channel detection and this synchronization is a big issue. The networks in TDD environment must be synchronized. Otherwise, it happens that you have in an uplink time slot a strong downlink signal, so it's an uplink interferer. And you will see it in some cases with such a tool set. Another point for such a scanner is I need a higher sensitivity. It must be more sensitive than a device. And we are talking here about minus 140 dBm. And I need a high accuracy and a high speed because I want to do as well some channel impulse response measurements in a factory environment where I have a lot of metallic uh, pr uh, facility in, in this room. And just to give a, a short intro, how does it look like? Is That's an automatic channel detector, so my receiver tells me all technologies in the bands I configured, and it tells me which base stations are around there. And on band 78, it's the lowest row. I see here on the circle one, <coughs> I have multiple cells in the overlap. <coughs> and this was a case where the two cells have been displayed, even it was 
one PCI. So it was coming, the signal, from one base station. And the problem there was a hardware defect. The synchronization, the uh, uh, sync unit, um, had issues in this case. And this you would never see with a test mobile or with a mobile. So this is one of the advantages of such a passive tool. The number two is a private network situation. It was at a university where they did some trials and they didn't got the latency, they didn't got the throughput. The machinery was not working. And then we switched on the scanner and we saw there is a second site. And they told me, no, it cannot be. We have just one site. So we dived in and we could see what is the cell identity. So I said, there is another cell identity. And then they started to think and said, oh, this cell identity is from the department beside us. And they just did a software update at this stage where they did this trial. And they were wondering what happens there. And even worse, the second site was not synchronized. So I saw for a very good power level, a very bad signal to noise ratio, unexpected. And these are the ways what we learned, how to dive in and how to see what is the environment. Is it good enough for these business critical applications? That was a little bit an outlook around this testing, yeah, what, what, where we spent and where we get a, did, got a lot of experience. Another subject I would like to bring when we talk about innovations beyond on 5G. And Rodian Schwarz is as well a broadcast um, provider, broadcast station provider. And when we see these verticals, we have a lot of applications where you need a multicast transformation. And the idea is here not to talk about 5G broadcast. It's a 5G technology for multicasting, which we are addressing and where we are running some proof of concepts. And what is one of the driver in this area? If we talk to the content providers, well, they have optimized the distribution costs while reaching a wider audience. They need a reliable and flexible distribution system. And they look for alternatives in this communication world. If I see the driving minds of broadcast operators, they see the gaining importance of smartphones and tablets. They see the change in the customer behavior. The linear transmission is, is losing a little bit the popularity and they have to investigate in, in new B2B opportunities. If I see on the network operator side, we have an increased uh, uh, life of, of video consumption. We have this <coughs> issue about reduction energy costs. We saw it today several times. So um, do I need in a football stadium 20,000 20, times a download of the same stream of the last goal? Or can I optimize there? Subscribers are expecting content anytime, everywhere. And all these kind of drivers we have. And um, what is the question? Efficient media delivery anywhere, anytime to everybody. And we are proud as well because of our expertise, that we can provide solutions based on the 3GPP standard. So we have, since release 14, this 5G broadcast technology inside. In release 16, we had further advancements. And now there is a certain kind of innovation running. And at the beginning, it was really quiet because there have been no devices, smartphones, and so on. Today, we can say we have a lot of exchange with Qualcomm. There is a program that says 5G broadcast will be integrated in the chips. And I can tell you, today we have already some devices on the market which have 5G already integrated, but it's not enabled. And this 5G multicast is a technology which can be as an overlay 
in such a network structure. And we, we just consider all these multicast ap applications in, in a, a case of catastrophes, where you, where you need to cover a broadcast channel to the rescue teams and so on. There are plenty of applications at the moment which are under investigation. And if I see on the landscape, these are a few countries with proof of concepts where we've been in with our solutions, where we could show the quality, where we could show the performance. And I can tell you it's really outstanding. Hartmut, you saw it by yourself. I think it's really a very unique way to address this kind of energy saving issues and multicast applications. Coming to the end of my presentation, so what are the learnings? The 5G performance measurements are essential. And we have to find methodologies for this individual use case implementation. This interactivity test, according ITU, is a test in one single test for round trip, packet delay, packet error, improving bit rate. Identify root cause analysis, troubleshooting, passive and active testing. This combination makes it very powerful. And 5G broadcast could be an energy saving answer for multicasting applications. For this 5G broadcast, if there are any questions around, our expert, Targa Assis, he is in the background of the room. He is around here. He can tell you some more information about this kind of proof of concepts and what we did so far in which venue castings and so on, we, we, we could approve this technology. Thank you very much for listening. And it's up to you if Thank questions you. are allowed or not, or if we have to go for... I, I think one <laughs> question should be okay because the speakers before you took some of your time. So do we have any question? Or you are on the boat this night? I'll be on the boat. Uh, okay, we have some breaks. If I don't see any finger raised at the moment, we should go on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very interesting. <laughs>